Joining us now is Anna Arsov, managing director and co-head of Global Banks at Moody's, to talk about uh, what this industry is facing right now. Anna, um, when it comes to a First Republic, I, I suppose what options are on the table for the bank, and and um, I guess how applicable are these issues across other regional banks? Great point. I mean, we have been monitoring the industry, obviously very actively over the last um, six plus weeks. And First Republic was unfortunately one of those banks that got caught in the significant deposit outflow. Roughly 50% of deposits have left the institution since that fateful March 12th, March 11 weekend. Um, so the issue is why strategic options are difficult for this bank. Mm -hmm. It's because they have significant available for sale and HTM call to maturity losses. That means that whoever buys, if they buy it as a living bank, if mm -hmm. you will, they have to um, pulk capital into the institution. Yeah. So therefore, uh, what has happened is a very constructive for the time solution where the large banks have a consortium. They have infused $30 billion of deposits for, to bridge this um, deposit outflow uh, that has happened. And uh, what I assume there is a reporting, as you just noted, that there are some strategic options that are waiting, um, such as asset sales, et cetera. Uh, I cannot, as you know, comment on, on speculation, but certainly what we know from other issues is that once a bank ends, you know, ends in a situation where they have to significantly structure, mm -hmm. uh, that at least waits on your profitability, if nothing else. That, sure. you know, waits on your culture, on confidence of your clients, confidence of your employees, and particularly for a wealth management focused institutions, as we know, a lot of those uh, bankers a very attractive proposition to go somewhere else. Sure. So the key is to watch what kind of retention is there and uh, attrition, if you will, from both clients and, and banks in light of this uh, environment. Now, I guess the market has, since the events of March or early March, moved on to a thought, uh, well, there's a selective handful of institutions that seem to be in a tough spot. Systematically, not that big of an issue. Uh, yes, there's going to be deposit flight, but it's not leaving in a rush. And the larger banks seem to be net beneficiaries. So can we get some comfort uh, that that remains the case? Well, I kind of bifurcate it. And I think the regulatory environment as the U.S. is, um, to a certain degree, responsible why there's a bifurcated story. Mm -hmm. uh, the large banks, absolutely. We just finished the results of the large, um, you know, universal investment banks. And the story is very strong. We have... Um, very strong profitability on the back of, again, very strong deposit franchises that's delivering profitability at higher rates. Mm -hmm. Asset quality is keeping up. Yes, there's some reserve built, but they can certainly afford it with the profitability and diversification they have. And, um, and, and we think that they are a nice buffer, if you will, for systemic risks. Mm -hmm. It's a very different story than 2008 when the large banks were not necessarily, or not all, were in a, such a strong position. And they were very, an old regulatory move, if you will, post um, the financial crisis. Dodd Frank was really focused on these institutions to make them stronger, more resilient, which has happened. Yeah. And it's the case. And they're benefiting. And the market is benefiting from that. But then on the other side, as we know, there was something called tailoring, uh, which left certain institutions in a less uh, stringent regulatory environment. Mm -hmm. So no real LCR focused rules, lower capital you know, rules, et cetera. So that has allowed for some banks to take increasing asset liability management risk. Mm -hmm. And the governance around asset liability management risk is certainly inconsistent. And I want to draw an attention that all, not all regional banks and not all small banks are having the same issues. Yeah. They're very well small banks who are sub 25 billion who look actually very good on this. Mm. But they're also banks who are above 100 billion who have increased ALM risk. So right. it's not one story. What we did, just from a rating agency perspective, is we did take a, a rating action uh, on Friday, uh, affecting 22 banks. So there were 11 downgrades. Mm -hmm. But to, to mention that these downgrades were actually, for six institutions, they were the most impacted that happened post that weekend of SVB failing, uh, plus two institutions that were already on negative outlook. Mm -hmm. And if I can draw the attention of just sort of what is the theme, the theme is higher level of uninsured deposits, mm -hmm. more deposit outflight than average regional bank, lower capital than the median, mm -hmm. and for some high exposure to commercial real estate.